guys. We're home. We're now in Earth's orbit. Guys, uh, where is everybody? Guys, uh, our science program is about to begin. Um, sleepy heads. Oh, hi. I'm Homie. Um, looks like I'll be your host for today. Uh, today, we will explore the wonderful world of science. Mmm, let me see now. Um, mmm, oh, um, ah. On Earth, every living thing is made up of cells. Humans, animals, plants, except <laughs> robots. Our topic today is about cells and how they reproduce. Let me check it out with Professor Gloop. Maybe he can show you his cells. Professor Gloop! Professor Gloop! Hey, Professor! <laughs> Sorry, it looks like he's busy with his experiments right now. Oh! Um, well, since Professor Gloop is really busy, I guess I'll have to do it. So, let's continue our study on cells. My body doesn't produce any cells, but believe me, I know everything about cells. You know what? Cells are strange because Nearly every organism that is made up of many cells begins life as a single cell of a fertilized egg. Yep, just one cell. The single cell keeps on splitting up until it forms an embryo that contains trillions of cells of different types. Over time, the embryo develops into a baby and even at that very young age, some of the baby's cells began to wear out. Yes, they die. <laughs> we were just becoming friends. <laughs> but why? Why? <laughs> oh, don't die on me, please. Why? <laughs> <laughs> ah, <clears throat> well, in fact, in a typical human being, about 50 million cells die every second of every day. Jeez, thank God I'm a robot. Wow, that's a lot of dead cells. And you know what? Scientists are actually counting them. 2,531,987 Oh, I give up! Therefore, new cells must be produced all the time to replace old, dead and damaged cells. Old? New. For cells to reproduce themselves, whether in a developing embryo or in a fully grown adult organism, certain definite steps must be followed to assure that the new cells will contain exactly the same genetic materials or genes that were originally present in the parent cell. This very important process of reproducing cells is called mitosis. What? Did you say that you couldn't understand that? Ayah! It simply means that the new cells must be exactly the same as their parents. You know, like a photocopy? Get it? 
Mitosis is defined as the duplication and division of the nucleus of a cell and its chromosomes during cell reproduction. Isn't that magic? Wow, really amazing! Scientists have discovered four distinct stages of mitosis. The first is prophase, and this is followed by the second phase called the metaphase. The anaphase is the third, and finally, there's the telophase, the fourth phase. An average of 6% of a cell's total lifespan is spent in these four stages of mitosis. The other 94% of its life is spent in a stage that is not considered to be part of mitosis. This is called the interface or the resting stage. Since the things that happen at the interface stage allows mitosis to take place, let's begin our examination of mitosis by zooming in to the interface cells. Interface is defined as the period of a cell's life cycle between one mitosis and the next. It's, it's a period of cell division. Average human cells spend about 19 hours in the interface and only 50 to 90 minutes in mitosis and cell division. It's a process that never stops. Kuchin, isn't that fantastic? Ouch! Oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, now, let's see what happens inside a cell as it starts to undergo the intricate process of mitosis. Prophase, the first stage of mitosis. Prophase can be defined as the stage of mitosis when the chromosomes first appear and the nucleus membrane and nucleolus disappear from view. The chromatin begins to form itself into a definite shape of separate chromosomes. At the same time, the nuclear membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm begins to be absorbed into the cell. As this happens, the tiny nucleolus found in the nucleus also disappears. As prophase progresses, the chromosomes become easier to see. Oh yes, did I tell you that chromosomes are always found in groups of two called homologous chromosomes? Well, there are two copies of each chromosome present in every cell of the body except for certain sex cells. In our example, there is one pair of tall chromosomes and one pair of short chromosomes. Don't look too happy. That's not the end of it. Here's more. If we take a closer look, we will see that each chromosome actually consists of two parts called sister chromatids. They contain the duplicated DNA. These sister chromatids are attached together all along their lengths. The sister chromatids are held together at a specific region called the centromere. Joined together in this way, the chromosomes begin to arrange themselves so that they can split up into the newly formed cells. And as they do so, the sister chromatids become easier to see. Such tiny things, but they need such a big explanation, huh? <laughs> huh? Uh, do you need any help? No? Okay. Well, besides the changes in chromatin and chromosomes, other important events are also taking place inside the cell when prophase begins. In animal cells, a structure called a centriole 
is divided into two daughter centrioles that migrate to opposite ends of the cells. Between the centrioles, a delicate arrangement of microtubules called the spindle is formed. The microtubules that form the spindle are called spindle fibers. So, this is the end of the first stage. Yahoo! Three more to go. <laughs> In normal cells, all the complicated events that define the prophase take between 30 and 60 minutes to complete. The next stage of mitosis is called metaphase. Metaphase, the second stage of mitosis. Metaphase is defined as the stage of mitosis when all the chromosomes are lined up along the center or equator of the cell. Throughout this short 5 to 10 minutes, the chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers. At the same time, the centromeres that bind the sister chromatids split apart. So, this second stage of mitosis performs two activities. The first is the attachment of the chromosomes to the spindle fibers and the second is the splitting of the centromeres. The splitting of the centromeres signals the start of the anaphase stage. Anaphase, the third stage of mitosis. Anaphase is the stage of mitosis when the sister chromatids separate and move towards opposite poles of the cell. When this happens, they are no longer called sister chromatids. They are now called daughter chromosomes. This movement happens very quickly, mm, in about 5 minutes. And what happens? Well, the spindle fibers disappear and a full diploid set of chromosomes is now found at each end of the cell. So, this is the end of stage 3. We have one more to go. How is it going so far? Do you understand? Huh? What? I can't hear you. Oh, go ahead and shout. I can't hear you anyway. Sorry. <laughs> uh, trying to tease me, huh? Well, I'm doing the teaching and you are not. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, see you again, pal. What a jealous creature. <laughs> okay, let us continue our lesson. Uh, oh yes, the final stage of mitosis. Telophase and cytokinesis, the final stage of mitosis. If you notice, there are two processes here. Yep, two in one. And because they occur at the same time. They have no time to waste and it just goes on and on. So, the moral of the story is, please appreciate your time. It's precious. Telophase is defined as the stage of mitosis when the new daughter chromosomes change back into the threads of chromatin and a new nucleus membrane begins to form. If you look closely, you can see how this process happens. The daughter chromosomes are changed back into threads of chromatin, like the cell before the mitosis. On the outer part of it, a new nucleus membrane starts to form and the new nucleoli appear. It will appear in each newly formed nucleus. 
Now, they already look like their parents, but they have two parts. So, in the final stage of mitosis, the cytoplasm splits in half as the cell membranes approach the two new daughter cells. The final process of cell reproduction is called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is defined as the division of the cytoplasm during mitosis. The cytoplasm divides itself the center. So, now there are two new cells. It requires between 10 to 15 minutes to accomplish both telophase and cytokinesis in this final stage. The process of mitosis is complete. Yahoo! Hooray! <laughs>video clip i'm not done yet of course the mitosis processes are finished 
but there is still some more information that I haven't given yet. Who did it? Kuchen? Was it you? Aha! Uh -huh. I know it is you. I can see your eyes under the door. Don't be naughty, Kuchen! <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's not his usual self. Mm. Maybe he lost a few screws when the door hit his head. <laughs> Oops! I almost forgot to tell you about the new cells. When the reproductive processes of the cell are complete, the two new cells go back to the interface stage, and each possesses the identical genes of the parent cell. See? They look the same, and even their genes are identical to the parent cell. These two new half-size cells will then grow larger until each becomes just as big as the parent cell. And that goes for all cells. Yep, that is all you have to know about mitosis and its stages. I'm going to run that for you one more time to make sure you understand. Recall! Mitosis is the duplication and division process of a parent cell. It causes the cell to become two new nuclei with the same number of chromosomes. Mitosis happens in all cells in the human body except for some cells like the neuron and red blood cells. There are four distinct stages of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Prophase is the first stage of mitosis when the chromosomes appear. This is also when the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus disappear and the centrioles move to the side to form the mitotic spindle. Metaphase is the second stage of mitosis when all the chromosomes are lined up along the center or the equator of the cell. Anaphase is the third stage of mitosis when the sister chromatids separate and move towards the opposite poles of the cell. Telophase is the fourth stage of mitosis. This happens when the new daughter chromosomes change back into threads of chromatin and a new nucleus membrane begins to form. And then there is the process called cytokinesis. It's the division of the cytoplasm during mitosis. We also learned about the interphase. That is the period between one stage of mitosis and the next. It's a resting stage. Wasn't that fun, guys? <laughs> now we know a lot about cells and mitosis. Gee, science is just great, isn't it? Oh, hi there. Boys and girls, welcome to my spaceship. Here, we will learn and explore the wonderful world of science. Today, we will learn about mitosis. Wait, Professor. Uh, wait. Uh, wait. It's done. It's over. <laughs> I hosted the program. <laughs> I told them all they needed to know about mitosis. Huh? Yep. And now we have to say goodbye to the audience. <laughs> 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 
So, goodbye everybody. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Uh, bye.